follow your passion first. First, 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 first. If I were to ask you, what's your passion? Do you know the answer? People gave me the same stupid advice. Do what you love. Thank you. Thanks. You know, find your passion. Thank you. Like, what am I supposed to do with that advice? In my opinion, you have all been given some terrible advice. Want to be happy? Build a life, not just a business. Mm -hmm. Living that believe life. Out here, yeah, living that believe life. Every day we live in that believe life. Hustle like we live in that believe life. Living life, yeah, so we grinding it out. Every single day we be grinding it out. Hustle like we live in that believe life. Oh, that believe life. Oh. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and this channel was created to help you overcome the number one challenge that is holding you back a lack of belief in yourself. You watch these videos because you know there's something more inside you too. You've got Michael Jordan level talent at something. So today let's live your best believe life and learn if you should or should not follow your passion. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with thought number one, follow your passion first with Kobe Bryant. Follow your passion first. Mm -hmm. First, 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 first. Um, you know, when I retired from the game, you know, I said they're asking kind of all the wrong questions. You know, what's the biggest industry I can get into? And it's all the wrong stuff. And you got to sit there and ask yourself, okay, what am I truly passionate about? What do I enjoy doing? And when you feel that way, I, honestly, I mean, you feel like you have never worked a day in your life. It's the most fun thing in the world. You get up in the morning excited about what you're doing. And you got to be really honest with yourself about it. If you wake up in the morning and you're dreading going to work, dude, do something else. <laughs> right. Do something else. And those are hard decisions to make. But when you make those decisions, it's a very liberating experience. And you find out that the rewards will come. Thought number two, follow the energy with Mel Robbins. If I were to ask you, what's your passion? Do you know the answer? Most of you are going to say, no, I, I don't know what my passion is. And while we're on the topic of passion, I bet you're starting to even think, how do you even find your passion? And when it comes to finding your passion, you're making a huge mistake. You're looking for passion in the wrong place. And it's not your fault that you're making this mistake because you were told a lie. You were told you gotta go find your passion. I even remember reading that if you find your passion, you'll never work a day in your life. But here's the problem. You've been led to believe that passion is something that you find, that it's like some magical career, or it's an amazing person, or it's a place that you're gonna live, or it's a pursuit. Passion, it's none of those things. Let me tell you the problem with thinking that passion is something that you find. When you think passion is some treasure that's hidden from you, you're gonna spend your whole life looking for something. That's gonna make you feel lost, it's gonna make you feel overwhelmed, it's gonna make you feel confused. So let me show you the way. There's no such thing as finding your passion. You see, passion is not something that you find. Passion is something that you feel. If you're looking to find it, that thing that you were born to do, I want you to stop looking right now. Stop living your life like you're missing some sort of puzzle piece and if you just find it, then everything is gonna fall into place because passion isn't a person, a place, or a thing. Passion doesn't exist outside of you. You're not gonna find it in a job. You're not gonna find it on a mountaintop. You're not gonna find it in a relationship. You're not gonna find it online and you're definitely not gonna find it in a fancy hotel on the ocean in the Maldives. You wanna know where you find it? Look in the mirror because passion is just energy. That's it. Passion is something you feel. Passion is not something that you find. Passion is the energy you bring to everything that you're doing. That's all that passion is. That's why you can be miserable, making millions on Wall Street, but you can be passionate as hell directing traffic on a runway for a fraction of the money. Because you know what? Passion is not what you do, it's how you do it. So when somebody says, I've discovered my passion, you know what they're really saying? I feel energized when I get up in the morning because I'm excited about how I show up in my life and the energy that I feel when I'm living my life. That's it. Passion is just energy. Thought number three, do what you love with Steve Jobs. I'm wondering what would be the single most valuable piece of advice you'd give us to 
to even attempt to create some of the value that you guys have done in both your very impressive companies? People say you, you have to have a lot of passion for what you're doing, and it's totally true, and the reason is, uh, is because it's so hard that if you don't, any rational person would give up. It's really hard, and you have to do it over a sustained period of time. So if you don't love it, if you're not having fun doing it, you don't really love it, uh, you're gonna give up. And that's what happens to most people, actually. If you really look at, 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 at the ones that uh, ended up you know, being successful, unquote, in the eyes of society and the ones that didn't, oftentimes it, it's the ones that are successful loved what they did so they could persevere when, you know, when it got really tough. And, and the ones that, that didn't love it quit because they're sane, right? Who would want to put up with this stuff if you don't love it? So it's a lot of hard work and, and it's a lot of worrying constantly. And uh, um, if you don't love it, you're gonna fail. So you gotta love it, you gotta have passion. Also, if you wanna have more confidence and self-love, check out my 254 series, they're free. The links to join on the description below. Everybody gives too much of a sh about what everybody else thinks. Absolutely. And you know who they think the mo they're the worried the most about? Their friends. The skill to hold your opinions to yourself until everyone has spoken does two things. I always did everything back ass half words. You know, I, I, I like to, to challenge myself. Thought number four, align yourself with your beliefs with Simon Sinek. The problem with passion, you know, people gave me the same stupid advice. Do what you love. Thank you. Thanks. You know, find your passion. Thank you. Like, what am I supposed to do with that advice? Right. You know? Um, and, and what I learned is, is that passion like profit is a result. When we commit ourselves to some higher purpose, some higher cause, passion is the result. When we work hard for something we don't believe in, it's called stress. When we work hard for something we do believe in, it's called passion. Passion is not the entry point, it's at the exit point. So the question is not to find your passion or find the thing you're passionate about. The question is what do you believe? The question is what are your ideals? What are your values? And where are the places in which the, those people or those organizations share your values, share your beliefs? Um, who is articulating a vision of a world that you would like to live in? Push yourself in those directions, be around those people, you know, align yourself with those organizations, and what you will find is you show up every day with passion. Thought number five, find your calling with Jeff Bezos. Ever since I was five years old, that's when Neil Armstrong stepped onto the surface of the moon. I've been um, kind of passionate about space, rockets, rocket engines, space travel. I became a science fiction reader, um, and I've always known that I wanted to uh, um, you know, do something having to do with space, and I've spent a lot of time thinking about it for really almost my whole life. And that's one of the things, you guys will find that you have passions, and having a passion is a gift. I think we all have passions, and you don't get to uh, choose them, they pick you, but you have to be alert to them. You have to be looking for them. And when you find your passion, it's a fantastic gift for you because it gives you direction, it gives you purpose. Uh, you can have a job, or you can have a career, or you can have a calling. And the best thing is to have a calling. And if you find your passion, you'll have that, and all your work won't feel like work to you. And thought number six, the last one before a very special bonus clip, is don't follow your passion with Mike Rowe. In my opinion, you have all been given some terrible advice. And that advice is this, follow your passion. Every time I watch the Oscars, I cringe when some famous movie star, trophy in hand, starts to deconstruct the secret of their success. It's always the same thing. Don't let anyone tell you that you don't have what it takes, kid. And the ever popular, never give up on your dreams. Look, I understand the importance of persistence and the value of encouragement, but who tells a stranger to never give up on their dreams without even knowing what it is they're dreaming? I mean, how can Lady Gaga possibly know where your passion will lead you? Have these people never seen American Idol? Year after year, thousands of aspiring American idols show up with great expectations only to learn that they don't possess the skills they thought they did. What's really amazing, though, is not their lack of talent. The world's full of people who can't sing. It's their genuine shock at being rejected. The incredible realization that their passion and their ability had nothing to do with each other. Look, if we're talking about your hobby, by all means, let your passion lead you. But when it comes to making a living, it's easy to forget 
the dirty truth. Just because you're passionate about something doesn't mean you won't suck at it. And just because you've earned a degree in your chosen field, it doesn't mean you're going to find your dream job. Dream jobs are usually just that, dreams. But their imaginary existence just might keep you from exploring careers that offer a legitimate chance to perform meaningful work and develop a genuine passion for the job you already have. When I was 16, I wanted to follow in my grandfather's footsteps. He was a skilled tradesman, could build a house without a blueprint. That was my passion, and I followed it for years. I took all the shop classes at school. I did all I could to absorb the knowledge and skill that came so easily to my granddad. Unfortunately, the handy gene is recessive. It skipped right over me, and I struggled mightily to overcome my deficiencies, but I couldn't. I was one of those contestants on American Idol who believed his passion was enough to ensure his success. One day, I brought home a sconce I had made in wood shop. It looked like a paramecium. After a heavy sigh, my granddad gave me the best advice I've ever received. He told me, Mike, you can still be a tradesman, but only if you get yourself a different kind of toolbox. At the time, this felt contrary to everything I believed about the importance of passion and persistence and staying the course. But of course he was right, because staying the course, that only makes sense if you're headed in a sensible direction. And while passion is way too important to be without, it is way too fickle to follow around. Which brings us to the final dirty truth. Never follow your passion, but always bring it with you. Now I have a special bonus clip with Mark Cuban on how to follow your effort that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, I wanna know, what's your take? Is it the best advice to follow or the worst? Give me your two cents. Put it down in the comments below. When you find something you're good at, yeah. go for it. Yeah. And I also, also always say, it's not about passion. Everybody's got passion for something, yeah. right? Don't follow your passions, follow your efforts. Because okay. people say, you know, I was passionate to play baseball. I was passionate yeah. to play basketball. It yeah. doesn't mean I, all of a sudden I was going to be good enough. Yeah. But I found myself spending, being really curious about business, being really curious about technology. And that curiosity is really what drove me. And I think, particularly if you're young today, curiosity is great. Always learning and trying to find new things and being curious about new things. Because that's what leads you to that path. Trying to figure out in advance. Yeah. That's hard because you don't know what you don't yeah. know. I was never really into technology when I was a kid. Yeah. But then as I got a job that used it, I found out I was good at it. And once I found out I was good at it, then it became a lot more fun. Yeah. You know, when you're good at something, it's almost always fun. Yeah, right? yeah. And once it was fun and I combined that with, you know, my business skills, then I saw, okay, I know how to make money at this stuff because yeah. I know how to sell. Now I know tech. That gives me something I love to do. And so, you know, what I, what I tell people, the key is find something you love to do and be great at it. Yeah. Because once you do that, it's all gravy for me. If you wanna know how to attract success in 2020, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. I wanna explain something to you that not many people really understand. I wanna talk about the law of attraction.